ready. Greetings, gentlemen, kings, conquerors. My name is Reverend Dr. Kenneth Clark. I am from Breath of Life coming to our ministry. Um, we are I'm here, joined today with some brothers and colleagues of mine to be a blessing to you guys. Uh, this is what I do. I see some familiar faces and I see some new faces. Um, nevertheless, I'm glad to be able to be here to provide for you uh, a little bit of background. Um, the ministry that I do is outreach. Um, and I'm here to serve you guys in any way possible um, to be able to provide resources to you the best way that I can, whether it be employment opportunities, job coaching, and uh, housing. Uh, I will first want to let you guys know that this is not your permanent destination. This is just a pit stop. This is a pit stop. And if nobody has told you, I love it. And sometimes us as men, we're not really used to hearing that. Why I'm doing this is because number one, this is my service to God. And then number two, I once was where you guys were at. I dealt with homelessness for over 15 years. And once I made a vow to God, I promised to God that I was gonna be able to give back to the best way that I could to be able to go back and help my brothers the best way that I can. So that's why I am here to be a blessing to you guys, to let you guys know this is not your permanent destination. And whatever I can do uh, before leaving here, I will make sure you have my contact information. And I will make sure that I will be praying for you on a day-to-day -day basis. And whatever I can do to be a blessing to you, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, before I introduce my uh, other colleagues, my brothers, I first want to say a quick prayer, if you guys don't mind. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this opportunity to serve your people, God. I pray for every opportunity to come forth right now, God, that you bless them, God, that you bless their finances, you bless their employment, you bless their family, you bless their children, God. God, fill them up with love, joy, and happiness, and peace, God. Let them know that they are valuable, God. God, I ask for your spirit to be around this, these grounds right now, God. Touch the staff, God. God, I call for finances to come from the north, south, east, and west, God. I decree and declare employment opportunities right now, God. I decree and declare financial opportunities right now, God. I decree and declare housing, God. I decree and declare transportation, God. I decree and declare health, peace, and prosperity, God that I will give you all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Without further ado, I want to introduce my right-hand my right -hand brother, <clears throat> and he will do an introduction and tell a little bit more about himself. All right, what's going on, fellas? How y'all doing today? Hey. All right, my name is Minister Gary Henson. Um, just transpired not too long ago. I've been uh, walking in with Christ, I mean, pretty much all my life, but I didn't really know Christ. You know, it's one time where I knew of God, but now I really know God because I have a relationship with God. And how that happened was about two and a half years ago, in my weakest and my darkest moments, God touched me. See, I just cracked 30 years of alcoholism, drug addiction, sexual morality, I mean, profanity, all kinds of stuff you can think about, man. I was out here wilding out, selling dope women, I had it all. And I had a progressive disease of alcoholism and drug addiction, too. And it took me to my heightened point, man. This thing sat on me for 30 years. See, I struggled from early childhood trauma in life, man. I was uh, you know, adopted, separated from my family. Uh, shoot, faced with racism with whites and blacks all my life because I'm an Asian American man. So walking in these streets, I had to bang every day just to get my respect. Right around nine years old, I was sexually molested by older women. And that joint messed my head up big time. Then my, buddy, my brother caught a body down in Fort Washington when I was 11. I ain't had nothing. I, everything shut down in my life, man. And I ain't had nothing to turn to but the streets. I went to the streets, OG pulled me in, taught me the game, taught me the bang, and that's when I took my first drink at 11 years old, because it was so much trauma in my life that I was dealing with, that the only thing that could make me go away was the bottom of that bottle. And that stuck on me from 11 years old all the way. So but through the grace of God, I stayed you know, balanced in life and tried to 
make make sure I, I stayed just as much good in the world as much as, as bad. So it kept me at a plateau. But my progressive disease kept progressing on. I got in the military, joined the military, went to war, faced trauma there, drank, drink it got worse, got out, had three baby moms, kids, man, the story goes on. Y'all heard stories like this, I'm sure. We all can, can, can relate or know somebody that has dealt with that. The reason why I brought that up is because the impact and the power to change that happened to me was about two and a half years ago. I had got all twisted. I was hard as bad as I could. I was off the coke, man. I was bumping, drinking tequila, all that, man. And at the time, this uh, wife I had, she was trying to help me in my life, man. I was like, you know what? She was my enemy. So I was going to go put an end to that situation. She tried to get away my money, get away my alcohol, my drinking, all the women. She was like trying to ruin my life, I thought. But she was trying to help me. So I wanted to go down there and take care of that. I don't know what was going to happen, but I was going to go take care of it. But by the grace of God, he touched me. On my way down, I had a blackout. And I woke up in my living room with bullets and blood in my lap. And I was like, oh my God, I killed it. And right there, God touched me and hit me and knocked me on the ground. And I had a spiritual divine intervention. And God said to me, son, I'm going to give you a choice between life or death. What do you choose? And I was like, I love you, God. I choose you. So within 24 hours, the person I tried to hurt got me into recovery. And then while I was in recovery, within 24 hours later, I started to heal. My relationship grew with God, and then the next thing I know, boom, I was two weeks sober, three weeks sober, months sober, and my relationship started growing with God, and everything started transpiring. And then I said, man, I gotta find a way to prove myself to God that I'm legit. You know, I came out of recovery, and I had my children were scattered. I didn't even, I left a lot of details. I got three baby mothers, I had children scattered around. I lost the trust of my children, everything. It was all just chaos. But I came out here and was like, you know what, what can I do, God? I trust you. You saved my life, what can I do? He was like, how about you prove to me and your children, because if you died right now, they would think that you was just a phony, or you don't know, you just tried it. So I said, what could I do, what could I do? Grab, I, I grabbed my son and we put together some food and we went out and served the last fourth. Right there, when I got out there the streets, when I gave that first bag to the first person that needed some food, some help, I looked and I seen almost the face of Jesus in that, in that person's face and boom, it was right there. And it hit me. And I was like, this is it, this is what I'm gonna do. For the rest of my life, since God saved my life, I made a pact with God, I said, I'm gonna give you my life, I'm gonna serve you whatever I do, I'll go anywhere in the world to tell anybody about how God saved my life. And since he saved my life, I give him mine. And now all I do is outreach work. I mean, I was literally selling dope and carrying pistols and mean mugging on anybody I could get money on two and a half years ago. Now today, by the grace and power of God, he snapped that 30 years of all of that, and now I'm walking around with Bibles and praying for people in the blink of an eye. That's how quickly God turned in my life. And that's why I'm here. It brought me here to bring more uh, resources and more um, donations and different things like that. I collaborated with Kim through my journey and my walk through the streets doing outreach ministry. All right, only handfuls of brothers really go out in them trenches. CCNV, y'all know what I'm talking about. We down there in the grit and the grind. Uh, homeless, uh, the encampment sites and McPherson Square, they shut down. We were dealing with all of that for, for a long time. I mean, we've just been going out here. And now we come back here. And I haven't seen too many faces, but I've been in here a couple of times and, and cooked breakfast here in the morning with a couple of the chefs. And we were in here cooking breakfast. So I just coming back to show the consistency and let, just like he said, man, I love y'all too. I don't know any of y'all, but I love y'all. Through the grace of God, it teaches me to love my brothers and sisters no matter what. So this is where I'm at, and that's, where I, that's, what, that's what goes on with that. So I'd like to give a shout out to CNA Produce for providing some of the food that y'all are going to get today. Um, shout out to um, everybody that helped Agape Family Ministries. This is the ministries I'm with under Bishop Andre Gray. Um, and if y'all can get my contact information, we'll give, give with um, Reverend Dr. here. And we can, you know, see if we can collaborate and get more, um, you know, more donations and more resources and create some more positive spaces out here, man. We could have a cookout grill. I know there's other people out here that do the same thing and we can all be together. I got just one last thing to say is that the mentality needs to be, if, if we can help sustain our, our own people, we don't have to keep reaching out for other resources from people that be failing, all right? So if I get Monday and Tuesday, you get Wednesday and Thursday, you get Friday and Saturday, and we rest on Sunday. That means as a people, we just self-sustained ourselves. We don't take care of our own self. If we can all start having that type of mentality, and I just try to encourage other brothers and sisters too, that's why I got the film and stuff, because I can show people like, yo, we really doing that. We out here helping the people come and join us, send the money, send the blessings, send the donations, because you know we're going to be out here doing it. So I love y'all, man. I just thank y'all for sharing a little bit of my testimony, my story with y'all. And hopefully as we get to move more and more, y'all get to know me a little bit better. I can share even more in detail about stuff like that. So God bless you all, man. Thank you. Thank you.
Want to say one word? Yeah. How y'all doing today? My name is Solis Entertainment. Um, I'm not here to entertain anybody, though. Um, basically, what I do, I work alongside with great brothers such as these gentlemen that are coming here today. Um, it's oftentimes that people don't want to get up and do nothing. Um, I even heard a guy around here telling somebody, hey, do this, do that, we got to. God has somebody listen to us. Oftentimes, we're, even I don't want to get up and do nothing, but I have my brother here, King Kali, um, who helped motivate me to want to get up and do something. Because sometimes it's the harsh realities in life that make us not want to do nothing and stand still when God is saying, move. Yeah. You know, and I'm not really even trying to do this for the camera, like, this is, I, I mean, I don't really even like being up there. I'm the guy that's behind the scene. But if it could bring more people to help our peoples, yeah. you know, that's that's a whole other field that we're going to be not even playing in, that we're going to be in, period. Um, I do feel like these guys do love y'all. You know, not just y'all as a whole. I mean, the street life, we don't even like calling nobody homeless. You even say homeless to one of these guys. You know, they be like, nah, nah, homes. They homes. Watch them out, you know? That level of respect. Because uh, there's too many people out here that's riding around who just really don't respect any any of us. And and I was talking to my brother here earlier. He's like, a lot of us is just one paycheck away from being homeless. And I, and I, and I agree, absolutely. So while we're in the midst of being able to give, it's a good time to do because it, the Lord bless, he bless when we give. Um, and I do believe like through the garments that y'all gonna be, that y'all gonna put on and go to those interviews and garments that we added in addition for y'all kids when y'all go visit, I do believe that it's gonna change the dynamics of how y'all feel. Amen. You know, it's gonna change the dynamics of how you step into the building and, and step into the workforce place where they may wanna judge you but can't because they can't identify you because of your attire. You know, I've, I've been a firm believer in dressing how you feel and dressing in what you believe in. You know, for a long time, I didn't have it. I didn't, but I, I, I did it. I faked it until I made it, you know? No lie. And when I say fake it, I was going every day wearing a suit. I got picked that I got, but I, I finally nailed that job because I knew if I just stepped out there in a certain fashion, there's nothing nobody could do. But a lot of people can't do it on their own with a little push of what we're trying to do and, and the effort that we're trying to put forth, that's the push. And, and if, like, we, once you get those contact numbers, if your stuff get lost, misplaced, stolen, we'll replace that for you in order to, in order to get y'all by to the next step. I, I have a brother. My trial and tribulations, it was all for a reason. Uh, I had to fight and keep fake. It was all for a season. Uh, I had to go through the valley just to get to the mountain. Should write a book about every step on my way up the ladder. I came out the mud, it was an ugly chapter. I don't even show up at your fancy parties. If you see me hanging out, it's off the feet of rappers. Only born to go platinum. If you count my points and rebounds, quadruple platinum. Got two retired jerseys in two different cities. I'm still waiting on that call from the Orlando Magic. Look, I feel overly blessed. Put seven on the jet. I cannot be quoted for less. Taking trips day to day. I get global respect. When I'm not with Kenny Smith, I'm still close to a jet. Can't believe my little brother Kobe gone. Thank you for the three beat. If I talked about that pain, you wouldn't believe me. Might go by the LA Sparks and change the name to the GGs. Get Chuck the coach and first ship gon' be a freebie. Broken records, broken backboards. Broke the records for broken back, boys, I'm that raw Turks and Caicos with a bad bra She don't straight through my phone, she get distracted with the black cars Ha! Ah. Cars jingle like the bells in a holiday song Raise my kids and they proud of their home Stock portfolio is thick as a Harry